Hello everyone, my name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education here at TradeStation. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I am broadcasting live from the city of Plantation right here in the state of Florida. And I want to welcome everyone that has taken some time out of your schedules to join us and learn about TradeStation. Today's topic is filtering symbols and real-time scanning. In today's class, these are our objectives. Uh, of course, the main title is filtering symbols and real-time scanning, where we're going to add symbols and columns in radar screen, add studies and enable alerts in radar screen, and then we're going to sort and enable notifications in radar screen. And then we're going to show um, other filtering windows in TradeStation, such as the hot list, the scanner, and how you can use you know some of the sample scans that are in TradeStation, and how you can create your own custom scans. And then at the very end, we'll show you how to schedule scans and, and create a custom symbol list. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about here today is for educational purposes only. They're not recommendations of TradeStation. Active trading is not suitable for everyone, and it should only be done with risk capital, especially when it comes to options which carry a high degree of risk. I am going to share two links that go into more details about those disclosures, and you may also find them on our website, tradestation.com. Okay, so it's time to get started. Let me go ahead and switch my screen to TradeStation. There it is. Um, I'm using the new version of TradeStation, and this is just a blank workspace. When you have a blank workspace such as this, the apps bar at the top of TradeStation is going to display all the different buttons for apps that you can open up in a workspace. In those apps, you're going to find Radar Screen. All the apps here are sorted in alphabetical order. So I click on Radar Screen, and my window comes up. Let me go ahead and resize this radar screen so that we can fill up the whole screen area. You can just grab it from a corner and resize it. You know, the radar screen is a real-time scanner. If you don't have radar screen added on to your platform, you probably have a button or a very similar button. It looks very much the same. Let me go back to apps here. So the button looks very much like this one, but instead of saying radar screen, it says quotes. If you find that you log into TradeStation and you're looking for radar screen and all you see is quotes, is because your account probably has not been enabled for this optional feature. It is an optional feature. Um, most of uh, the new pricing plans that we have here at TradeStation include radar screen. So make sure that when you go to apps, you see radar screen in here. And then if you don't, I'll try to explain you know what the differences are. Radar screen is a much more powerful tool than the regular quotes window. So here is radar screen. You can see that it comes up blank. And uh, you do have to type symbols manually. So I can do that with my keyboard. If I type in MSFT and I hit enter, I get a quote for Microsoft. If I type in DIS and enter, AAPL, enter, ANAT, enter. So you can start you know, typing the collection of the symbols you want one by one which is, you know, uh, if it's something that you want to do, you can do that. If you have a list of symbols somewhere, let's say that you have a list of symbols on Excel, you can copy the list of symbols by clicking and dragging. You know how to you highlight different cells in Excel. And then you can copy the list of symbols and paste them right here in radar screen. Whenever you don't want a symbol, you can just highlight the symbol and press delete. Or you can do a, you know, multiple selection by clicking and dragging. Notice. I click on Microsoft and then I drag down and it's you know selected those three symbols so that when I press delete on the keyboard, all of them are deleted. What I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to insert a prepackaged list of symbols. So let me go ahead and position my highlight right here at the very top. That way when you insert a list of symbols, it'll start at the very top row. And I'm going to click on data over here. From this data menu, you can add a symbol as I just did by typing it in. But you can go here to add symbol if you want to look for a specific symbols using the symbol lookup. But what I wanted to point out is that you have the option here to add a symbol list. And our developers have created a good way to insert some of the major indexes uh, 
in the market right here in radar screen. For example, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, or the Dow Jones Industrial. Uh, take a look at the other symbol lists that are available. Let me just click here for a moment and show you some of the different examples we have. If you open up trade station symbol lists, you can see the index components. You can also go into industry groups and see uh, the collection of symbols that are uh, categorized by these industry groups it makes it very simple for you to follow specific groups in the industry. For this demonstration, I'm just going to stick to one of the trade station index components, uh, which is you know on the main menu. So let me go ahead and cancel out of this and go back to the data. And if I go to add symbol list, if I click on the option right here that says NASDAQ 100 index, it'll insert the 100 right into my radar screen without me doing a lot of effort. So this is all the 100 symbols that make up the NASDAQ 100, and I can see real-time quotes for them. For this presentation, I'm going to make the font bigger. I know it's a little small, and if you're looking at my radar screen, um, it may be difficult to follow. So you can do this on your own personal copy of TradeStation. So click on the Settings button, go to Page, and this will allow me to change the font. I'm going to change my font to a 10, and I'm going to make it bold, not only for the headings, but also for the grid values. And then just click OK. When you make changes to the font and the size, and you want that to be the default, you have to make sure that you save a template. Otherwise, when you open up a new radar screen window, it'll go back to the original um, settings. When you go here to settings, and you go to templates, you're going to see that we have a collection of templates that you can apply to your radar screen. So let me go here to apply template. We have the classic black or the classic white and all these different color styles and you can apply to your radar screen um, from the templates tab. Now if you want to create your own template, that's totally fine. Uh, I can go to the settings, go to, again to the templates section and save the template. And I can call this my template, which has my own look and style, and I'm going to set it as a default. So whenever you make changes to radar screen, if you want those changes to be uh, the permanent ones, make sure that you save the template and then set it as a default. This template will save styling when it comes to colors and when it comes to font size and some other uh, styling options. It doesn't save the group of columns that's that's something you do somewhere else. So let me go ahead and click OK. And I've set it up as a default. Uh, one of the things that um, Radar Screen allows you to do is to remove and add different columns. So here, on the very last column of Radar Screen, you're going to see that there's a plus sign that you can click on in order to take you to the place where you can select the different columns that are available. Now, here on the left-hand side, we have all the columns that are available. They are grouped by three main categories, or four. You can display all studies, or you can go to indicators, show me's, and paint bars. But all these items can be inserted onto my radar screen window. You're going to take a look over here, and some of them will have a check mark next to history. And a lot of times, if you don't have radar screen, these indicators that have history will not show up. But let me show you some other things that you can insert. We have the last, say the default columns are right here on the right hand side, the last net change, net percent change, bid and ask, high low, volume today, and the interval. You can insert things such as, if I go over here, I can add the previous close, I can move it down and put it all the way at the very end. I can insert uh, information such as the range. I can add it. Now these are these are columns that you don't have to have radar screen for. So all those you find right here. And you have a, a VWAP. So let's go ahead and add VWAP here and click OK. So all these columns are added right here on the right hand side and you can make adjustments to everything that's here. Uh, you don't have to necessarily go there to make uh, changes. For example, if I want my previous close to be right over here between net percent change and the bid, what I do is I click on the header for previous close and then I drag it over here. 
in between net percent change and the previous close. That's a quick way for you to organize columns in radar screen. Another thing that uh, will save you time is if you don't need a column, let's say that I want to get rid of bid or ask, I can click on the bid and press delete on the keyboard. That's a shortcut to deleting columns from the radar screen window. And I can do the same thing for ask. Just press delete as the column is highlighted. Now one of the things that is going to set radar screen apart from a regular quotes window is this column right here called interval. Interval is a type of historical data that's going to be used in order to make calculations on technical analysis. Let me go back in here to the plus sign on the very last column of radar screen. And this is the list of indicators. As I said earlier, every Every study that you see here that has a check mark, it's because that indicator uses historical data. Let's say, for example, um, Roger is suggesting we um, do an ATR. Yes, an ATR is a type of indicator that uses historical data in order for you to pro in order for you to see a calculation. Here is the average true range. You see that it uses historical data. I'm going to add it, and I'm going to leave it right there next to the interval, and I'm just going to click OK. So this is going to go out there and calculate the average true range for all the symbols. This is 100 symbols and it does the calculation for you. Average true range, that's the title of the column. As you can see, the very top symbol, which is AVGO, has an average true range of 93 cents. But where is that calculation coming from? Um, if I go and right click on this column header, I can go to studies and I can edit the average true range for all symbols. This is the same uh, concept that um, you use in charting where you modify or you edit an indicator. I can come here to the inputs and find out what the ATR length is. This is 14. Now the 14 that you see here, it's basically 14 bars of ATR. So if I look at the value again, the 93 cents for this symbol AVGO, it's looking at the past 14 bars on a five minute interval, meaning that on the, on the last 14 bars, on a five minute interval, this is the true range, 93 cents. It's tied in with the interval. Now, if you want your analysis techniques to be calculated using different data intervals, you have to do the following. You don't format the interval. I mean, that's your first inclination is to go to the interval and format it to something different. You have to come here to the symbol side because we have to edit the symbol. And if you remember in charting, when you edit the symbol in charting, just think that you have to do the same thing here in radar screen. And what I do, if I want to do the whole column, I just click on the header for symbol. You can see how it highlights the whole column. And I'm going to use this time frame drop down at the very top of my radar screen. And I'm going to select daily. All right. Now, let's take a look at AV, AVGO again. Because if you remember, the average true range was 93 cents. But now on a daily interval, which means that it's taking the range of 14 daily bars, the range is 8.61. So it makes it very clear that these columns that use historical data are directly linked to this interval column. Now you may mix and match different intervals. So you may have a group of symbols that are set on a daily and a group of symbols that are set on a different time interval. Let me show you a trick. If you highlight a group of symbols by clicking and dragging, notice that I just clicked on the very top one and I just dragged my mouse button all the way down, let's do here, ADC, and I'm going to go to the time frame and change these to 60 minute. Take a look. Over here in interval, 60 minute only applies to the symbols that I've just grouped and highlighted. The other ones are still on daily. So you can make all these different types of uh, um, adjustments on a group of symbols on all symbols or on a per symbol basis. So let me go back to the time frame and I'm going to go back to daily. One thing that I do and I've uh, and I've taught this to different you know trade station users is sometimes you want to see the value of an indicator on different time intervals. So what I do, I'm going to come over here right below AVGO and I'm going to click on settings right here at the top of my radar screen. Now, hold on, not settings. Let's go to data. 
and you have different options here like add a label row or add a blank row if I add a blank row and I type in the same symbol a v g o and I hit enter I can format this other AVGO and make the time frame maybe a 60 minute. So now I see the average true range on a daily interval which is $8.61 and I see the average true range on a 60 minute interval which is $4.16. You know sometimes you want to look at you know different calculations across different time frames and a way to do that is to you know type in the symbol multiple times in radar screen at a different time frame. Okay. Let me see some of the uh, questions here from the chat. Is the five minute similar to a five minute chart? It is exactly the same. So think of the interval, and that's a great question. Uh, when you when you think of interval, you have to think of, of of a chart. And and by adding this column that I just added, the average to range, I applied that study to one hundred individual charts. So think of every single row that exists in radar screen as a chart analysis window. And you can just have your technical analysis as columns. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other things that you can do here. Um, enabling alerts. We already showed you how to insert studies. And you can do studies that do not require the average to range. Now what if you want to set up an alert? Well first of all, let me show you a quick alert on something like net percent change. Let's suppose that the market has just opened or you can set it up even before the market opens and you want to know whenever any, any symbol um, reaches a 3% change on either direction, I want to get alerted. Now this is a very simple alert. I can right click on the column header for net percent change, go to studies and edit the net change for all symbols. When I go to the inputs, Notice that I have a field for the high alert, which I'm going to make. Let me make it. Let me let me make it higher. Now, a lot of a lot of uh, these symbols um, are going to exceed the three percent very quickly because of the volatility in the market. So let me go ahead and do five percent on the upside and five percent on the downside. So you can set up the two alerts down here. And once you set up your values, just come here to alerts and enable the alert. When you set up an alert, and this is something that I do as a habit, and I, I'm going to do this uh, recommendation for you guys. When you set up an alert on something large, as I'm doing right now, which is a list of 100 symbols, is I usually disable the, message, the messaging center. I do not want any pop-up messages or any sounds going off because it would be annoying if there's a big move in the market and I start getting alerts on all these 100 symbols and pop-up windows and sirens going off. So I disabled the messaging and I'll show you how the alerts show up here in radar screen. I'm going to click OK. And if you look at the column, right there in the corner there is a yellow marker that tells you that there's an alert enabled inside that cell. In fact, take a look. When I take my cursor and I hover over one of these yellow markers, it tells you high alert percentage 5, low alert percentage 5. And it gives you some information about the inputs. But every so often, you're going to find a red marker. Right here, I have a red marker for this symbol HAS because the symbol is up 8.34%. And if I keep on scrolling down, I see this other one, which is down 7.48%. The symbol is MCHP. And out of all the, all the 100 symbols, you see that two are meeting the criteria. So what do you do? All right. These um, column headers can be double clicked in order for you to sort. Let me show you. If I double click on the net percent change, you can see how the values inside that column are sorted in ascending order. So you see the one that has lost the most to the one that has made the most. And if you double click again on the header, it will sort in the opposite order from the highest to the lowest. But you can do one more thing. Instead of sorting by values, what if you want to see the ones that are triggering the alert up here at the top? Go to settings and go to page. Page has a great feature which is sorting. And one of the nice things about sorting is that it doesn't sort by the value, but it sorts by alert as well. So I can come here to the net percent change 
and select the one that has the word alert in parentheses. And I want those to be sorted to the very top. And I want it to keep my data sorted so that if it finds another one that is triggering the alert, just bring it to the top. And I can bring down the number of seconds here as well. When I click OK, what I didn't do, I'm not sure if you noticed, is that I didn't, when I went over here and I edited the study for all symbols, this is something that you have to be um, aware of. When you format an alert and you want the alert to apply for all the symbols, you have to make sure that you click on the column header so that all the symbols are selected. And also, you want the alert to be continuous so that it's real-time alert. So when I do that, you can see that the two alerts are sorted to the top, and I can see that two symbols out of the 100 are above or below the 5% mark. Let's take a look at some other features here. I'm going to do a little bit more of a complex uh, scan. Let's go and click on the plus here on the right hand side and I'm going to do moving averages. We have here moving average exponential two lines. That's the one that I'm going to use. I'm going to transfer it here to the right hand side, clicking on add, and I'm just going to move down. Okay, to put it at the very end of my radar screen. So this is my fast exponential moving average and I have a slow exponential moving average. Uh, someone suggested that we do a 10 and a 40. I'm just going to take those numbers so that I can show you how to edit you know the parameters of this moving average exponential. I'm going to right click on the header so it applies for the whole column, go to studies, and I'm going to edit the moving average two lines for all symbols. From here I'm going to first of all enable the alert since I'm here. Alert continuously and again I'm going to disable the method center. But in the inputs and the fast here is going to be a 10 and the slow is going to be a 40. And then I just click OK, and then I have it right there. I can see the yellow and I can see the red. What do the reds mean? Whenever you see a red marker, it means that the alert is being triggered at this precise moment in real time. But let's do something else. We did it with the percent change. Now we want the alerts to be grouped at the very top so that I can see which symbols are triggering that crossover. So I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to page again. And here from the sorting tab, I can select another sorting key. In this case, I'm going to click on moving average exponential two lines alert. Remember that you want to grab the one that has alert in parentheses. Otherwise, it'll sort by the value. And I'm just going to click OK. And notice how those symbols are sorted to the top. You see one here, but it's not triggering the alert. I mean, that's being sorted to the top because of this alert over here. It's up, you know, above a 5%. So it's also sorted to the top. Now what I do, whenever I'm looking at alert triggered here in radar screen, I like to have that same study on a chart. So I'm going to click here on the apps and click on chart analysis so that I can bring it up here in charting. All right. I have the chart next to it. I'm just resizing it so that it looks at uh, the same data. I'm going to change the time frame to daily. I'm going to go to studies and add a study, which is the same study that I have here in radar screen. I'd just like to see a graphical confirmation. I'm going to select the two-line moving average. Okay, let me format those averages so that it matches what I have here, which is a 10 and a 40. There we go. You see the two averages right there on the screen. For this symbol AVGO, they're not crossing. But if I click on any, let me link these two windows together. So I link my symbol, and that's something you can do on your trade station. You can link a chart with your radar screen, and you can just click on every symbol here in radar screen and have the chart update to that symbol. Let me click on MCHB, and you can see right here on the right-hand side how the two moving averages are crossing on the current bar. If I click on another one, which is ADP, you can see how they're crossing right now. So you can see the power of radar screen where I have 100 symbols and just following a few steps I'm able to tell radar screen out of all these 100 symbols which ones are meeting a certain criteria. In this case which ones are crossing on these exponential moving averages. And I think that's a very very powerful tool when you want to do some real-time scanning. Uh, someone's asking if you can get a text alert. 
uh, we haven't incorporated text alerts but if your phone gets email let me go back in there let me right click on the header go to studies and edit the moving average if you go to the alerts tab right here and you click on configure for messaging center you'd have to turn on the messaging uh, center uh, you can set up an email address now, a lot of uh, cell phone service providers uh, provide an email address that pretty much works as a text uh, message and you can you know get that address from your cell phone service provider but once you you can set up an email here and trade station every time that it generates an alert it will send you an email to whatever email address you supply all right let me cancel out of this so we talked about sort and sorting you find it in settings and go to page that'll give you the ability to sort uh, and do automatic sorting and if I go here to page as well let me just show you something else you can also turn on something called messaging messaging is a way for a radar screen to send you periodic you know messaging you enable the messaging you can tell a uh, radar screen the frequency of that email to be sent to you what column information you want to get and then you have to configure the email by clicking configure email here on the right hand side all right and that way radar screen in every uh, depending on what frequency you specify is going to send you an email with all the different data points that you select here inside the window let's go and show you some other uh, scanning tools in TradeStation. This is one of the most powerful and if you're looking for real-time scanning, radar screen is going to be your go-to um, scanning window. But let me show you some other uh, scanning tools. I'm going to open up a new workspace and in this workspace I'm going to open up a hot list. Alright, the hot list comes up. Let me resize it. I'm going to make the font bigger so let me go to settings, window, the font and I'll make it bold and 10 so it's easier on your eyes. I'm going to set it as a default and click OK. First thing, what does the hot list do? The hot list will take you and provide you the top 25 symbols that meet certain criteria. If you look at the top we have some drop downs. So you can select equities, index options or stock options. You can also filter by the exchange if you want you know uh, a specific exchange or all of them and then here you have the activity or the filters that you select if I collapse the main categories you're going to see that there's three main categories in this hot list we have price filters we have volatility filters and we have volume filters in the price filter we have things such as percent gainers or percent losers I'm going to leave this on percent gainers this is percent gainers for one day and this is the top 25. I can say give me the top 50 and it'll give them to you. One thing that I do if I'm looking at one extreme like the percent gainers, I like to go to the apps and I like to open another hot list. You can have multiple hot list windows. And I'm going to put it right here on the right hand side of my workspace and resize it so that I can see the two sides. So on one side I have percent gainers and I can come here and say on this one I want the percent losers for one day. So here you can see SNAP is a percent gainer. It's up 47% from the close of yesterday. 47.72. And on the downside we have MTSI which is down 34.14%. One thing that you cannot do here in Hotlist is mix filters together. So you cannot say okay I want to look at the percent gainers uh, for one day but I want to also look at the ones that have been traded the most. So the hot list we call it a very simple window to use because you just have to open it and select the filter that you want to apply to the whole universe of symbols. Here are the percent gainers we have uh, up to 30 days. Percent gainers for the 30 days we can see that this stock AKER is up 221 percent from the close of 30 days ago. So uh, take a look. I just go here to the activity drop down and I select the filter that I want and this happens very quickly. We have filters such as symbols that are approaching a 52 week high. 
or the ones that are breaking above or below their 52-week high. We have symbols that are gapping. I spoke to a trade station user a couple weeks back and he was interested in finding stocks that have gapped. These, um, these hot lists are going to be updating before the market open. So you're going to be getting pre-market activity. So from the very beginning, you can see which stocks are gapping up or gapping down even in the pre-market. Or if you want to go and look at options data, I can go here into my volume lists and say, give me the most active on call volume. If I click here, you can see that Spiders, it has a call volume of 1.6 million calls. So take a look at all the filters that are available here because I'm pretty sure you're going to find something that you can use in your everyday trading. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other scanning tools. This is the hot list. There's not much configuration you can do here. Let me just recap. You can only have one filter at a time. So if you're looking for something more advanced, like I want to see uh, the symbols that are or that have that are overbought using an RSI. So if you're using RSI and you want to find symbols that are above 70, then you can use a different type of tool, which we call the scanner. So let me go at the bottom of my trade station. I'm going to save this workspace as my hot list and then click on save. One thing that you can do that I haven't shown you, let's go over here to my percent gainers. Again, percent gainers one day. One, one thing that I do is sometimes is I highlight the symbols from here. So there's 50 symbols. I'm going to right click on the highlighted area. I'm going to click on copy. Because if you want to do additional uh, real-time scanning, you can copy and paste symbols. And then I can come here to my radar screen. Radar screen has this functionality that allows you to add pages down here. So I'm going to right click where it says page one, and I'm going to add a second page. And I'm going to call this, by the way, if I double click on the tab, I can rename it. This is my hot list, hot list. Okay, and I can right click right here on the very first empty cell under symbol, and I can just click on paste. And that's going to transfer those 50 symbols that I got from my hot list into my radar screen, which updates in real time, and I can do some additional testing here. Page one, I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to call this uh, NASDAQ 100. So you have multiple pages down here in radar screen that I didn't show you when we were talking about this, but um, it, it's going to give you an additional organizational tool. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the scanner. The scanner is a type of uh, scanning tool that allows you to do custom scans. And I'm going to show you the ones that come prepackaged. So you can also take a look at them and see if it's something that uh, you can use. Let's go and click on scanner. I had run some scans here. Let me go ahead and remove these um, so that it is exactly the way that you have it in your own trade station. So let me go ahead and, and delete anything that's here. Let me highlight it. Press delete. Are you sure you wish to remove? Yes. Delete. Yes. Delete. Yes. So you can delete anything you've created here. And this is the way, the way that the scanner uh, shows up on the screen. You can, let me open this up so that we can organize the information better. You can create a scan by clicking on this button. You can uh, create a, or use a sample scan. You can run a scan, but if you don't have any scans in, in the scanner, nothing's going to run, or you can view a tutorial. Let's go ahead and look at the sample scan. I click on sample scan. Uh, this window pops up with a list of uh, scans that TradeStation provides as sample scans. You can take a look at the ones that are here. They're grouped by category. You have chart patterns, growth, technical, and value. They, you can use them. You can use them as a starting point or as a sample and then edit them. Let's go ahead and take one of these. I'm going to take the big movers. And the way that you use these sample scans is by clicking and dragging. So you click Big Movers and you drag it over here and drop it in this area on the left-hand side. And you can see that Big Movers has been added to my scan list. Okay? Any of these scans can just move can, can be moved over. Let me go ahead and close out the Tracition Sample Scans. And once you have a scan in there, you can click on Run right here at the bottom. 
I'm going to run it, and then I'll show you what the scan is doing. It's called Big Movers. I run it, and you can see within seconds, I get a list of 29 symbols that meet the criteria. Now, what is the criteria that Big Movers is looking for? If I come over here to Settings, this is where the criteria is displayed. Let's start from the very top. The name, Big Movers. Description is going to find stocks experiencing consistent price appreciation over the past six months. Um, all the stocks are included, and this is the criteria. First of all, the description is just going to display it. Then it's going to look for stocks that have a closing price between 10 and 100, that have a volume average for the past three months of greater than 500,000. We also look at market cap, and we have we want companies that have a greater market cap than 100 million. And then we have percent change for the past five days, 30 days, 13 weeks, and 26 weeks. And notice how we have the percentages up here. These are stocks that are appreciating in value consistently. Let me show you first the log. If you look at the very top, this is what the scanner did. It added all stocks to the symbol universe, and it tells you the number of stocks that it scanned, 8,549 different symbols. And after it applied all the filters that we talked about in the criteria, only 29 symbols remain. If you look at the results, we see the 29 symbols. We see the different fields that it was scanning for, the description, the closing price, the volume average, the market cap, and the different percent change values. So it's very useful. Now, over here on the left-hand side, if I click on the plus over here, it tells me the date and the time that the scan was run. That tells you that this window is only um, current at the time that you run it. So at 2... 43 and 36 seconds p.m., the 29 symbols that met the criteria were these. Now, if you want to refresh the list, you have to run the scan again. Notice what happens when I highlight the scan, big movers, and I click on run one more time. It's running, and now it gives me two lists, one at 2.43 and another one at 2.46 that, of course, didn't change much, but I just want you to, to be aware that every time you run it, it's going to run through the filters and give you an updated list. Now for this one, I don't think there was any changes. We have still the 29 symbols. But um, if you're running a scan that is sensitive to you know, current data, run it and you get a new list of symbols. Now the list of symbols can be copied and pasted in a radar screen window for you to do real-time analysis. If you want to take a look at the insights of Big Movers, highlight it and click Customize right here at the bottom. It gives you the ability to look at all the filters that have been added, and you can add your own. For example, I can you know, keep the same filters over here. Maybe uh, disable some of these uh, percent changes. Just go to the past five days and the past 30 days. By unchecking them, you know the filter remains, but it's not going to be applied. So if I click on Run, you see now it finds 47 symbols because I disabled two of the filters that were used in the scan. And that's something you can do on this sample scan. Let me go back in there, go to Customize, and say, well, I disabled the last two. Let me add one of my own. So let's say that I want to see, um, we looked at volume average, we looked at the close, uh, the description. If you go to the drop-down, you're going to find a lot of different folders that you can look into and find fields that you think are going to be of interest to you. We have options related data. Okay, so if you want to know out of all these symbols which ones are optionable, sometimes what I do is I interest calls and puts and then say show me any stocks that have a greater um, open interest calls and puts greater than zero. So that'll give me any stocks that have options out there. So I'm going to run it. Okay, and notice that now I have a list of 41 symbols. Now you can compare 
you know, list or runs right here. So if I click on the one that I ran previously, I can see that I have 47 symbols. But after running a scan on open interest, it dropped about six because when I go to the other one, I only have 41 symbols because now here you can see a column with an open interest puts and calls. You can see the one that has the most puts and calls and that's Snap, the one that's been traded most at this moment in the options world. A lot of interesting things. Now what I'm going to show you is how to create your own custom scan from scratch. I showed you how to take a sample scan and make some modifications. Let's go ahead and start one of our own from scratch. Let's go here and click on add right here at the bottom left. And this will be my price, earnings, volume, and we're going to add an RSI. So we're going to do a combination of quote data, some fundamental, and some technical, which is something you can do in this scanner. A lot of scanners out there in the brokerage platform industry um, only allow you to do some quote and fundamental, not technical. You can see how powerful this is. Let's go ahead and click next. And here at the top, we have symbols to include. I'm going to go to the drop down and select all stocks. But if you go to the drop down, you know, take a look at all the different options that are available. You have the ability to do a custom symbol list. You can do a scan on specific exchanges or futures. Um, uh, you want to do uh, any anything that is part of the platform, you can pretty much bring it in here. Right here at the bottom, you have the option to exclude certain sectors or certain... If I go to the drop down down here, I can say, well, I want all stocks, but I do not want any stocks that are in the New York Stock Exchange. So avoid bringing in any symbols from the New York Stock Exchange. If I want to do any exclusions, I can do it down here at the bottom of my scan. I'm not going to do any exclusions at the moment, so I'm just going to click on the X right here on the right hand side to remove it. So we have, we're doing a scan on the all, all symbols in the symbol universe. I'm going to click on next and here's where I start you know adding my criteria. I'm going to come here to the drop down. You can go to the drop down and you can search for things you're, you're uh, on your own by just opening any of these folders and seeing what's inside. You know, sometimes if you hover this area right here, it's going to show you a definition of anything that you highlight. So sometimes if something uh, is not very clear, you can just highlight it, look at the bottom, and it tells you what that field is and how it's calculated. If you do not find what you're looking for, what I suggest you do is that you click back so that the drop down disappears and you can type uh, whatever field you're looking for. So if I type in the word close, it'll give me every single item that matches the word close in the database. But you can just type it in and hit enter. This is the closing price. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look for stocks that have a closing price between. Notice that you have to select an operator, otherwise it won't show it to you. And I'm going to look for stocks between five and fifty dollars. Five and 50. Okay, I'm going to go to the second row and say for volume I'm going to use this field right here which is a volume average 10 days. For the past 10 days I want the stock to be a volume that is greater or equal to 1 million shares. All right, my third criteria is going to be earnings. So I'm going to do EPS. My third um, is going to be EPS for the most recent quarter. So I'm just clicking from here. Notice how it resets to zero. That's a problem. So I'm just going to do, uh, let me just go here to the drop down. I'm going to go to profitability, earnings per share, and select earnings per share for the most recent quarter. That's MRQ. And I want the earnings to be greater than zero. So positive earnings. And I'm going to go back here to earnings per share. And I want the earnings per share for the 12 trailing months, that's what TTM stands for, to be greater than, let me go back here to profitability and compare that to the earnings per share for the prior 12 trailing months. So not only we want positive on the most current, we want positive also 
year over year. Before I continue, I usually do a search to see how many symbols remain. So I'm just going to click on Run here. It's going to apply all the filters. And I click on Log over here at the bottom to see the results. So about 8,500 symbols were, were uh, scanned. 320 symbols remain. That's good. So I'm going to go back here and go to Customize. And I'm going to add an RSI. If you look towards the bottom, we have indicator show me's and paint bars. So all the technical analysis that you find in charting, you're going to find them here, which is great. So any technical idea, not only the ones that are supplied by TradeStation, but something that you create your own, you can use it in the scanner. I'm going to go to indicator, and this will give you all the indicators that are available in charting. And as I said earlier, I'm going to use the RSI. This is the RSI. You can see that it has multiple drop downs. You know, it has an RSI, we have an overbought, an oversold, and we have an alert field here. You also have a plus here to the left of the RSI, which is important, because the plus sign right here to the left will allow you to modify the parameters. If you want to use something shorter than a 14 bar RSI, you can do that. If you want to use a different interval, now this is where the interval comes into play, because a lot of times these technical analysis will use daily data. But if you want your RSI to be calculated on a minute interval, you have to change it here. I'm going to leave it on daily, but I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that if you want to do an, if you want to do like a, an RSI intraday on a minute interval, you have to open up or expand the indicator and change it there. I'm not going to change it. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and look at the RSI value, and I want that value to be greater than 70 or overbought. If I run this, you're going to see that the 320 symbols that remain are going to be calculating easy language, which means that once it narrows down the list of symbols, now it's going to calculate the technical indicators, and it's going to load historical data for each one of those symbols in order to calculate. Now, that's something to keep in mind, because sometimes we want to use a technical scan on the whole universe, and that's going to take too long. Remember, there's about... 8,500 symbols in the symbol universe. And if you do an RSI on 8,500 symbols, it's going to take a while for your computer to load all the data for those 8,500 symbols and do the calculation for the RSI. You can see that we have 320 symbols remaining, and this is taking some time to complete. Notice how it's stuck at 99%, and hopefully it'll be completed before I finish this class, because I wanted to show you what this uh, scan looks like. Um, I can leave that running and show you some other things here on these other scans. Um, one thing that I wanted to scanner is the type of window that saves all the information every time that you run it. So you don't have to really be concerned about saving you know, the scanner to a workspace, because if I close it and I reopen it again, it'll have my scan information there. Here it is. We have the second one. Uh, we have a few errors right here in the log. It said fail to calculate RSI, not enough data for FTSI or PAGS. It probably found a couple symbols that didn't have enough historical data to calculate the RSI, and that's fine. It means that it didn't do it for that. We have symbol. Zero symbols remain. Let's go here to the results. There's no symbols. No symbols met the selected criteria. And that's something that you're probably going to encounter. Out of all the 320 symbols, there's no symbol that is above 70 right now. Are there any symbols that are at a different value? Let's go and customize. I'm going to click on Customize. You can come back here to the criteria and say, well, what about any symbols below 30, which is my oversold. If I run this again, and I go to my results, hold on, I didn't run it. So let me go back to customize. Oh, this is running right here. Okay, so it's running again on the 320 symbols. And um, the, the thing is that I was highlighting one of these results, and there was no... Well, let me go back to when you highlight the name of the scanner, you can see the status of this scan and you can see that it's running again on the 320 symbols and see if we can get any uh, symbols that are below the oversold. 
Andy is asking in the chat if you can see. He's asking if you can do an RSI between 40 and 50. Yes, you can. Right here, I'm just using extremes, the overbought and the oversold. But you can technically do any type of comparison. Just go to the operator dropdown and choose between instead of using you know greater than or equal to. And then you can do a range of values if you want to look for an RSI between 40 and 50. So it seems like this is uh, going to take its time. And probably no symbols are going to be over. So, oh, we do. We do have symbols here. We have a total of 46 symbols that are oversold. You see the RSI value right here? This is very interesting. So no symbols were overbought out of the 320 that remained, but we have 46 symbols that are oversold. Let's go ahead and take a look at a chart. I'm going to go here to my apps and open up a chart next to my scanner because I do want to point out something that is very important when you run a scan. I'm going to resize my, my chart. I'm going to insert the study right here on my chart. It's going to be the RSI. And it's going to be on a daily interval. I want to link the two windows together. And I'm going to take a look at the very top symbol here, ACER. It loads right here on my screen. Okay, I want you to take a look at something. The value, the value of the RSI right here is 24 for ACRE, right? You can see that the value of ACRE RSI on the chart is 28. So it's close, but not quite the same. The reason for this, and this is something that we have to pay attention to, the reason for that is because the scanner, when you do a technical analysis on a daily bar, it's going to look at the most recent closed bar. What does that mean? That the current bar that is being built at this moment is not closed yet. So it will not use of the current bar. But it does bring the RSI value of the prior bar, 24. And if I click over here on my chart to view my data tips, and I look at the RSI value on this bar, which is the previous bar, so do you see the, right there in the data tips the number of the RSI, which is in cyan, and it says 24.21? That is the value of the RSI on the previous bar, and that's the value that the scanner is using because you selected to do an RSI on a daily bar. So it looks at the most recent closed bar. That means that if you do a calculation on one minute bar, it'll just use the most recent closed one minute bar which is an intraday scan. So things, things to think about uh, that you know, are, 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 are going to throw you off if you look at current values on those technical analysis. One thing that I wanted to show you is that you can set up an alert. I don't want to really look for um, the value of the RSI. Let's say that you want to do an alert scan. And this is very handy because let's say that you're using you know, the in fact, let, let's use a different example because I want to use some. Let me go ahead and disable the RSI. I'm going to go back to the same example that uh, I was showing you before, which is the exponential moving averages. So I'm going to go back in there and say, I want my moving average to line exponential. I'm going to click OK. Uh, let's use, you know, five minute data for this. All right, and I'm just going to click on run. Actually, no, before I click on run, I want to show you something. Here, instead of looking for the fast average or the slow average, I'm going to set it to alert, which means that it's going to look for the alert criteria. I'm not really interested what the value of the fast average is or the, the value of the slow average. What I'm looking for is for the lines to be crossing. So when you're looking for alert criteria, you have to make sure that you set the filter to alert and then run it. Uh, there are incompatible data types for the selected criteria. All right, RSI less than 30. What I want the alert is to be true. What I forgot to do is select the operator for this indicator. So I'm going to run it now. Uh, okay, it says alert less than zero. That's not going to work. So let me just remove the RSI altogether and try to run it again. 
Okay, there we go. So now it comes down. It's going to run the alert, and it's going to do um, the scan on the moving averages to exponential. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that same indicator right here to my chart. While that is running, the indicator is right here, moving average to line, exponential to line. Click OK. And it was a five-minute interval. So let's go to five-minute. And if I click on the very first one, ABBB, you can see how the crossover happened one bar ago, but it's a five-minute interval. If I cl click on ACHC, you see the crossover happened on the prior bar five minutes ago. So always think of technical analysis scans in the scanner as of the most recent closed bar. So again, to set the time frame for the scan, you do it on the indicator level. So when you're inserting your criteria here, make sure that you expand the indicator and you select the interval right here. This is the interval for the technical analysis scan. Perfect. One more thing. How to set up, one of the topics here that I wanted to show you is how to set up um, uh, automatic scheduling and do custom symbol list. If I go to customize, there's two additional tabs here. Schedule, which allows you to set um, the run of the scan to happen automatically. You can say run this on a daily basis at 8 a.m. That way when you launch TradeStation you don't have to run it manually. You, you can just rest assured that TradeStation will run it at this particular schedule. Uh, TradeStation does have to be running for the scanner to run but you can do it maybe intraday every 30 minutes or something so that you know the scanner is going to run this automatically for you. And one more thing, when it runs, if you want to create a custom symbol list, you can do that on the results. So here I can say save results every time the scan runs and automatically create a custom symbol list based on the scan results. Let's say that I, I give this an RSI scan name. Let's create a custom symbol list every time the scan runs. Let's see how that works. I'm going to click on run. It's going to run the scan for me. Notice that it does the whole scan. But I've set it so that it saves the list of symbols into a custom symbol list. And I'm going to show you how that comes in handy. So these 21 symbols were created and copied into a custom symbol list, which means that I can go here to a new radar screen. I can go to data, add a symbol list, and go to uh, my list of uh, custom symbol lists and see that I have my RSI scan run today's date at 3.08 p.m. When I click OK, it adds those symbols into my radar screen. So by going here to the scanner, clicking Customize, and saving the results to a custom scan, and if you do that automatically, you'll have this collection of custom symbol lists that the scanner will create. And you can use in different applications right here in TradeStation. You can also set a notification to be sent to you every time that the scanner runs. And you can set up the configuration of that alert. All right. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And I hope to see you in a future event right here at TradeStation.